Hi, in this video we're discussing the concept of combinations. Combinations is a counting technique that we use to count up um, the number of possible subsets that can be drawn from a larger set. So let's look at an example quickly to illustrate the idea. If we have a set of numbers, one, two, three, four, so just these four integers here, and I want to figure out how many sets of two numbers I can draw from it, um, we can actually figure that out just by listing it, right? We can say, well, we can take the set one, two from there, one, three. We can take the numbers one and four. We can take two and three, two and four, and lastly, three and four. And those are all the unique sets of two numbers I can draw from that set of four numbers. Assuming that, we don't count four, three, for example, as being different from sets like three, four. In other words, just because they have the same numbers in them, we're going to see them as the same set. In other words, what that means is that we don't care about the order. So 4, 3 is going to be to us the same as set 3, 4. That isn't always true in every problem that you face, but here it is. Because we just want a generic subset. So we don't care if the order is different. All we care is that they have the same elements inside the set. If they do, we'll see 4, 3 as the same as 3, 4. Which means we don't have to list all the ways that you could spin these around and reverse them. So that keeps it at a smaller number of possible sets, right? So combinations has that issue going on there. It has the idea that you're drawing subsets from a larger set, and that order of the numbers or the items that you take out of the set is unimportant, right? So the order does not matter. So if you meet those criteria, then you have a combination problem. So if you meet all that criteria for any problem, you can say, well, I can use the combinations technique. So let's look at this problem and see if we can use the combination idea behind it. Well, when I look at the problem, it says, how many committees are possible in that last sentence, right? It says, a committee of three people is to be chosen from a group of 12 people. How many committees are possible? So the first thing you're looking for in any counting problem is this idea that you're looking for how many of something, right? How many ways, how many things, how many sets are possible, whatever they're saying, right? It always has to have this idea of how many. So we expect to see that. If we don't see that in the problem, then we have to assume that the problem is probably not the counting technique. It has to imply the idea that we want to figure out how many of something is possible. So here it says how many committees are possible. It looks like a counting problem. Now, if I think it might be combinations, I'm looking for there to be a larger set, and then we're going to draw some subset from it. So let's see. It says a committee of three people is to be chosen from a group of 12 people. So we're going to draw this subset of three people from this set of 12 people. And at that point, I think, yes, that meets the idea of a combination. So long as we don't care about the order of the group that we take out. So let's imagine a scenario. Let's imagine we take out Abigail, Bob, and Carlos to serve on our committee from this group of 12 people, right? Abigail, Bob, and Carlos. Well, let me ask you, would it matter if I said that it was Carlos, Abigail, and Bob serving on the committee? Wouldn't it be still the same committee of three people? I think it would be. And so in that case, I'm going to say that these two committees are the same. And if they are the same, it implies order does not matter, and we can use combinations because we're drawing a subset from a larger set, and order doesn't matter, and they want to know how many committees are possible total. All right, good. By the way, what would it look like if order was important here? Well, maybe they would have positions or titles, right? So maybe the first guy chosen is going to be selected to be the president. The second person is going to be the vice president, and the third person is going to be the secretary. If that would be the case, then of course these orders are different, right? Because here Abigail is president, in this group she's vice president, right? So the order has been switched around. You know, Carlos goes from secretary to president, so it's different, right? So this ordering would be different from this ordering, and we'd have to be counted separately. But we don't have that scenario here. It's just a generic committee. We don't have a scenario where there's a title associated with the positions on the committee. Okay, so in that case, order doesn't matter, and we're going to go ahead and work out the problem using this combination idea. So what's the formula for combinations? Well, let's start with the notation first. The notation for combinations is N choose R. N C R, the C stands for combinations, but people read it as N choose R. So from a set of N things, you want to choose R things, right, to form a subset. And this answers the question how many ways that can be done. And of course, there's other notation. There's N and R put in a parenthesis like this. That also implies the same notation. And finally, sometimes you'll see people use X instead of R, but it doesn't really matter what variables you use as long as it's 
something choose something else, right? And of course, this number always has to be bigger than this number, or they could possibly be equal where they're the same, right? But you could never have this number be bigger than this number. That's impossible. Okay, so let's now try to fill in that into this formula. To do that, we're going to have to discuss what the formula is for this. Well, the formula is actually pretty e easy to remember. The formula is basically a fraction, and the fraction has the following format. It's the first thing on top, factorial. The second thing on bottom, factorial. And then what you do is you put the difference of these two things in a parenthesis, factorial. So the difference between them is n minus r. And that's the formula for combinations. To fill it in for this specific problem, all we have to do is say, okay, the n here, the, the larger set is 12, the subset is 3, so that means our n here will be 12, so it would be 12 choose 3, 12 choose 3, and then what we're going to do is we're going to take the 12 and write it as 12 factorial on top, this guy will be factorial on the bottom, so 3 factorial on the bottom, and then finally it will be the difference between these two next to that 3 on the bottom. So what's the difference between 12 and 3? Well, the answer would be 9, so 9 factorial on the bottom. And then from here, you can use a calculator to evaluate this. Most calculators, even the cheapest ones, have this key somewhere on it. It will be an NCR key, so you usually have to hit Shift and hit that. Or sometimes it's under a PRB menu, so you might have it under a PRB menu, a PRB for probability, because this is often used in probability in the denominator or the numerator of a probability problem. And then finally, in a more advanced calculator, like a graphing calculator, there's just a math menu, and it'll be under math menu, where it says PRB as well. Okay, but either way, if you don't want to use your calculator, and you just want to use either a basic four-function calculator, or essentially do it by hand, then what you want to do is to simplify this a little bit. So what you're going to do that is you're going to say, okay, this guy on top, 12 factorial, what does he mean? Well, he means 12 times 11 times 10 times 9 factorial. Now, I'm stopping at 9 factorial because I see that at the bottom of my fraction. So I'm going to stop as soon as I see one of these guys at the bottom show up. And it'll always be the bigger of the two that shows up first, of course, because you're counting down from the top. And so I'm going to put that 9 factorial here. And then the 3 factorial is just 3 times 2 times 1. So I'll just write that out, 3 times 2 times 1. We, of course, could just call that 6 if we wanted to. But either way, because this is all multiplication and this is all multiplication, we're allowed to cancel things from the top and bottom. So those 9 factorials cancel out. And then we can do something if we want with this. Actually, we could evaluate this now with a basic four-function calculator. That's pretty easy. But if we didn't want to do that, we can simply uh, simplify this and then cancel with something above, right? So I could, for example, put the 3 into the 12 and the 2 into the 10. Or I could say 6, the whole denominator, 6, goes into 12 twice, leaving just a 2. And so then my overall result here is going to be 2 times 11, which is 22, times 10 is 220. So the answer to the question over here is 220. There are 220 possible committees that you can form from a group of 12 people when putting three people on this committee that you select.